Hey everyone, Madrybred here, and I thought that today I'd make something of a tutorial video for the Guild 2 Renaissance. This is in 2015, January, so they've already started on some of their beta patches again since making the game. So, some things you see in this might be fixed up a little bit more by the time you're playing, if you're just picking up the game now. But, I thought I'd show you basically how to start the game, because although they've added a tutorial back into the game, it doesn't explain what your opener should be so much. So I'm going to take this from the perspective of someone teaching someone who's never played the game before, so it's possible that some of this information you may already know. Let's start up a single player, and we hit Start Game. And I picked for a nice simple map for us to uh, learn on is just Vienna. Normally we play on the Hansa, as most people do. It's generally considered the best map, but Vienna's a little bit more simple, so I thought that that would be a good one to teach people on. This menu screen here. First, we want to select our hometown by clicking one of the three cities. You can see their relative size just by how advanced they look. So we have two small villages. We have a large city here in the middle. We'll start in Vienna. And all these other little icons you see around are natural resources in the area, like the mines here are mines. These usually denote some kind of trees to be cut or herbs to be gathered for different businesses. This is a business-based game. The random events here, it says um, no random events is checked off by default. What it means by random events are random little things that give you or take away very small amounts of money usually. They're pretty much inconsequential to the game, so doesn't hurt to have those off. And for less ambience, that's to have less animals that do nothing walking around. I would actually uh, recommend you have less ambience on, because no matter how good of a computer you have, the game isn't programmed very well. It chugs when you start speeding it up, no matter what. So having less ambience helps reduce that. Years per round is how many years pass every single 24 minutes. Uh, an hour in this game is one minute real life unless you speed it up or, throw, or slow it down. I recommend if you're starting off, you just do one year per round, but the default is four. This, of course, gives your characters longer to live. This is a family-based game and a dynasty-based game, though, so potentially your dynasty could go on forever, as long as you keep having kids. We're going to be going to dynasty mode, which is the default, and for the numbers of dynasties we want in this session, we'll do 6, but normally I like to do 12 just to keep things eventful. And for your coat of arms, this will be your team's color, as well as your coat of arms to identify by, and I think I'll go with the nice hot pink. So we're taken to the character select screen where you make your very first character. I'm of course Madrai Bread. Now your first name doesn't matter too much. This is just your initial character. This character is going to die sooner or later. The last name is what's important because this is your entire dynasty name. Every person who marries into the family, is born into the family, anyone like that is going to have that dynasty name. So we're the Bread family. You pick your gender, although the only difference of gender in this game, it changed my name going back, um, the only difference in this game in gender is that a woman cannot work while she's pregnant, but she is only pregnant for about six or seven minutes, so it really doesn't matter. The genders are quite equal in this game. Next, we have your religion between Protestant and Catholic. It doesn't make much of a difference unless you're a scholar and you own your own church. However, it can affect how people look at you in terms of um, your political standing. Of course, going to church of the correct... Um, religion for yourself could raise respect of other people who go to the same church. Your zodiac sign, you can just test them all by clicking them on them, but they give you a free talent point in whatever talent you pick. I highly recommend you always pick Aries. Let me just take away all the points here. I highly recommend you always pick Aries because these points do go past the maximum. I'll go over skills real quick now, and I'll go into them more in depth later. The talents, I'll probably be calling them skill points a lot, just because that's kind of how they equate in other games, but they're called talents in this. You purchase them with experience points, which you get by doing just about any major action, whether it be making goods, or insulting someone, complimenting someone, winning a fight, any kind of major thing. You'll gain experience points for some more than others. You spend this on getting skill points, or talent points, which then increase your ability to do something. 
and in turn you also start to gain levels. Although levels and experience are not directly tied, that is to say, level 10 is the maximum level, but once you hit level 10 you can continue to get experience. You could potentially get enough experience to max out every single talent if your character lives long enough and you work enough. The maximum for any given talent is 10 points, however there are some abilities, which are feats as D&D players might know, and those can go past max as well as your zodiac sign. You generally want to have Ares for your constitution because your constitution is not just your health but your lifespan. So being able to go to 11 instead of just 10 on your lifespan is very important. You can live more than 100 years old if you really focus on constitution. That being said, you start with 500 experience points to divvy out, and you'll notice that, and I'll go into class in a moment, you'll notice that I have a minus on constitution, a plus on dexterity, and a cross through on charisma. What this means is, on constitution, I have a negative, which means I have to pay extra experience to get levels in that. A dexterity is a plus, so I have to pay less. And with a cross through, that is neutral. I just pay the standard price. So, what determines what you are good and bad at? It's your class. Now, there are four classes, Patron, Craftsman, Scholar, and Rogue. These are determined what kinds of businesses that individual can run. Throughout your family, you could potentially run every single kind of business in the game, and as many as you want, really, depending on your class as well as your social ranking. However, when you're starting with just one person, you've got to have a business in mind. So we have the patron, which I recommend for beginners. It's low risk, low reward. You work in the food industry. You'll have something like a farm or a tavern or a bakery. You could be a craftsman, which tends to be high risk, high reward, but you're focused almost entirely on the manufacturing of goods. Whereas with a patron, you could be a farmer or a tavern barkeep or someone where you provide a service and good. People come to your tavern and they eat your porridge and they drink your beer, and you're also making your beer and your porridge. With a craftsman, you're much more focused on just making the goods and selling it to people or the market. A craftsman would be a blacksmith, a woodworker, a stonemason, someone like that. A scholar tends to work the more odd jobs. They could work in like an alchemic factory where you're making perfumes or stink bombs. You could own your own church or cathedral and be a preacher of your religion as well as write literature as they would back in the time. You could be, oh, what were the other ones? You could own a hospital and treat the wounded in your city and other cities who may, people from other cities may come to your city to be treated if you have a good enough hospital. And you could have something like a crypt if you want an odd job where you're just making weird trinkets. You could have a bank where you give out loans. All kinds of stuff with a scholar. Scholars are interesting in that I believe they're the only ones with a plus in rhetoric. Are patrons good in rhetoric? No. Okay. Yep. Yep, I was right. Okay. Scholars have a, po a bonus to rhetoric, which, again, I'll get into the talents more later, but rhetoric is how good you are at speaking and convincing people of um, whatever it is you're saying, which means it can be a very powerful tool. It's considered a good skill. Lastly, we have the rogue, who specializes in nefarious deeds. A lot of your skills and uh, strengths here are combat-based and thievery-based, like your stealth bonus. You're all about hiring prostitutes, pickpockets, burglars, committing crimes to get money, hiring uh, waylayers outside of the cities to waylay trade routes to steal from the other dynasties so you can sell it off for yourself, or hiring mercenaries to extort people. You start to do all the nefarious things, but very, very little of what you do has to do with any kind of production. The Vagabond camp being, I believe, the only thing you actually produce anything at. Because that's a very, very different kind of class, I'll go over that in a different video. We're going to start with the patron because it's probably what you should be starting with. As for Protestant or Catholic, I'll go Protestant because although there's a very minor difference between them, I find the because the Protestant churches are more easily able to convert people because of the, uh, the small, unique things they have that help them convert people, the majority of the population over the course of a long game tends to shift towards being Protestant. So I'll go Protestant. As for my skills I want to start with, I like to... I already have my uh, have Aries, so I have two Constitution, which does not increase the price. 
I'll get up to three constitution, so I don't need to worry about it for a little while. And I'll get a little bit of handicrafts, so that my people produce goods faster. Again, I'll go into the talents as we get started. Life-giving water, nectar of the gods. I was just drinking some water. And guess it doesn't matter if I edit my guy or not, but... My grain is not moldy. I always like the leftmost voice. You'll notice his mouth flap messed up there. The game is kind of janky, but I love it. Let's get started. The German, I think it's German, the German loading screen there, by the way, is a very temporary glitch. I'm sure they'll fix that. So the first thing I did there when I started was I hit the space bar. This was to pause the game. Now it says pause, but it's actually in super slow motion. I recommend you pause immediately when starting the game with the space bar, or you can use the plus and minus keys on your keyboard to speed up and slow down. We start at 4,000 gold here. I believe how much gold you start with might depend on the city, but I could be misremembering. All right, so this is our house here. We have a person right here. Let me go over the UI real quick, user interface. We have our money at the top center. We have the date, the season, and the time all in the top right, as well as our three characters that we are currently controlling. We just start with one, of course. So we can select them there. Just like in any kind of RTS, you can hold down control and click on any number on your on your uh, keyboard. And then from then on, I held control and hit one. Now when I just hit one, I'll select that. It's a control group as it would be in any other kind of RTS and many strategy games in general. On the right here, we have a building list. The top one is always your council palace. This one here is your market and you'll see that there are other ones here. These are the markets of the other nearby cities. And lastly, we go into the buildings that we currently own with this building, of course, being the only place we own, which is our hut. This is just our home. When you have a building selected, you'll have an enter building button there, which will bring your camera into the building. You can surf around with the arrow keys if you want to look at the interior, but there's nothing special at the moment. You can also hit the M key at any point to see a map. The map is not the most useful thing in the world, but it's there. You can also move around the map much quicker if you hold down right click on the ground and move your mouse around. It's much faster than arrow keys or side scrolling, just so you know ahead of time. But to get into the game proper, what you want to do at the beginning of any, any given match is of course pause the game. And we want to construct a building in the bottom left here with the hammer picture. By default you'll be on the tab of whatever your profession is, so we're on the patron one. But you could look into the other stuff here of craftsman, scholar, rogue, and miscellaneous. Miscellaneous mostly just being housing a storehouse if you'd like to have extra storage, or lookout towers of different levels for if you need protection outside of your city. That's good for if you have something like a farm, which doesn't necessarily have the protection of the city guards that you would within these safe city walls. For the patron, you can start with a croft, and these are the different forms of it that we'll get later. You can upgrade it as you go, which is starting with a farm. That would be working the land, it's very, very safe money, but very, very low income, because the raw grain you're selling sells for very little. However, because you're not purchasing it from the market to make it into something else, you're just growing it, all you're really paying are the wages of your employees. And of course, to build the croft. There's also a bakehouse, it's what you th would think it would be, it's a bakehouse, and a public house, which becomes a tavern and an inn, and a fisher shack. Lastly, we have the specialty buildings of the windmill, which can grind up grain that you could get at your croft to make it into flour. We have an orchardist? Orchardist? Don't know how you'd pronounce it. However, they have an orchard, of course, where you could grow fruit for distilling into alcohol, stuff like that. You could get honey for a bakery. And the corral, field, and meadow are all just small little things you put near your farms and your orchard just so that you can actually grow the things. I think we'll start with a public house. It's one of the most basic things. And for my first building, I like to make it as close to the market as possible, just for selling to the market purposes. This looks like it's the market right here. So I'm going to build a public house right here. As you'll see as I go around, there are red areas, which means I can't build right there. And there are open green areas, which means I can build there. I could also build just about anywhere outside of town, as long as I'm not on the road. And a highly requested thing that people don't know is how do I rotate a building? You hold down the left control button and you move your mouse left and right. It's really obtuse and you'd probably never guess it, but that's how you do it. So we want to build a public house right here. 
Now I've clicked it, and uh, you'll see it's getting built there. It fl flicked in for a second and out, and it's just... The game's a little janky, like I said before. Uh, and we're in super slow motion, or else you would see that being built right now. After you have your first building being built, you want to find your palace. So we'll just double click on that, which is right here. Let me just get our bearings real quick. So that's just above the market there. Okay. We want to enter that building. Always has to load the first time you go in a building. And we want to just select our person and then right click on the ground so he'll start walking here. I'm going to hit the plus Come button up. right here to go to normal speed. So we know that he'll arrive here at some point soon. The first thing we want to do here is purchase a title. If we hold down a right click on our portrait, we find that we're a commoner. We are the lowest lo social status you can be. Other things we can glean from this is we can see our, our stats. We can see that we are unknown both in the Imperial fame, which would be your country's fame, as well as your guild reputation. So the country doesn't know us, and the guild doesn't know us. The guild, of course, being the Tradesman's Guild. That is how successful we are as a businessman. Social status, poor, which means that our assets total to very little, we are poor. And disposition, righteous, which means we've never been caught catching, uh, doing a crime. We're 19 years old, as you start at. With an attack value of 2, which is our fists, and an armor value of 0, as we have no armor. Now that we're in here, we have these new green options. Charge someone and purchase title. We want to purchase a title. This is where you pay money to get a new title in the oh, city government. Greetings. A lovely spring morning, isn't it? Looking at you, I can almost guess why you've come. So, you would like to acquire a new title, eh? Put your coin on the table and I'll see if I can arrange the title for you. And don't even think about trying to bargain. That would be a complete waste of time. Only 500. Well. I shall see what can be done and will inform you when the time has come. The building has been finished. All right. We heard there, and I'll pause again, that the building was finished. We just paid our money, which means we'll get the title later today. And we saw from the notification there that I just left clicked on that the building is finished. So we right click to get rid of that. And we have the building on our list here. So let's double click that. And we can see our building is done here. We start with a cart, as you can see right there. And we also start with one employee. Let's go in here. So this is the front room here. So we have a front room and a ba uh, back room, although you don't need to ever look at them if you don't want to. We have a lot of options here. This might be a little bit overwhelming, so I'm just going to go through them one by one. Cancel action. Doesn't do anything on a building right now. We have production and storeroom. You'll be seeing this tab a lot. I'll go over that in a moment. Improve building. This is where you can look at your improvements you can do here. You can hold down a right click on any given one to see what they do, and we'll be going over that later. Building levels, this is to upgrade your building as you level up and get more money. Manage building, this is if you want to have a computer manage your building for you. Arrange concert, that's if you want to... That uh, should be popping up any second. It's mostly just taking time because we have it on pause. There we go. That's if you want to put a down payment of, on money so that bands will come and play to increase uh, traffic at your place. Change building name. You just change the building name. Evacuate building. That's to tell everyone to get out. Sale building to sell it. Raise building to burn it down. And hire random unemployed person if you want more employees, as long as you have room for them. So in production and storeroom, we can see the owner of the building on the left here, and all the employees will fill these extra slots as we get them. We can make alcohol out of fruit, four grain porridges for every wheat, six weak beers for every wheat, and alcohol. And we start with some wheat in our stock here, and a sales stock is if you want to sell things directly to people. We also see our transport here of that cart outside so we can quickly put things in there. We want to left click on our employee, and left click on the grain porridge, so when he comes into work today, he's going to start working on cooking porridge right away, which we'll probably be putting in the sales stock. Let me check the price here. So I'm holding a right click on the grain porridge here, and we can see base price. That is how much money people would pay if you put it in the sales stock. And we can see the price it's selling for in each individual market. Now these markets will likely get flooded with porridge soon, so it's in our best interest to sell porridge in our sales stock, so people coming in will actually buy it rather than buying it at the market later. We would get much more stable money that way. So we have that being worked on right now. 
I'm gonna go ahead and actually hire, let me just speed up the game slightly, another employee and tell them to also work on grain porridge. Where to? We're on very slow mode right now. I've selected my cart here. You can select either by clicking on it out here or by clicking on it here. And I'm just gonna tell it the to go near the market. Now, although they're clearly different stands, every stand is connected. Doesn't matter which one you're next to. So we're gonna go normal speed here. I'm also gonna tell my commoner to come out here. Because I want him to be outside in a moment. And as soon as the cart comes over here and stops, I'm gonna pause it again, left click on the stand, and we can see that our cart is now in the transport section. And these different tabs will take us through the different things being sold at the market. The quantity of items are right there, in the bottom left. The top price is how much you would pay for each one you buy. The bottom price is how much you would get paid if you were to sell that there per unit. We want to buy, uh, was it wheat? I believe it's wheat we use. Let me check. We want wheat. We only have five. So I want to buy some more wheat. By holding left click, we can scroll up and down to see different amounts we want to buy. And you can see the price per unit changes as we buy more and more. I'm just going to go ahead and buy 20. There we go. You can see how much it costs there. Again, it's just going very slowly because I have the speed on slow. It's not, it's not like the game just plays like this. And I will right click on my building that I wanted to go to and click unload. The wagon is rolling. And it's going to go there and drop off the wheat straight into my stock for my people to use. And now. So what do we do next? We're still waiting for a title to come in, but we can be more productive on day one. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll see important units. We click on that and we go to best candidates for your character. These are the best people to marry right now. It's usually a random assortment of people that are very, very young of the opposite gender. So we want to hold right clicks on these. She's 20, 21, 21, 25, 27. Yeah, it's getting older and older. Okay. So you're a patron level one. I'm a patron too. She could manage the same businesses as I do, although only one can manage a business at a time. And you're a rogue. So if I were to marry her, I would have new businesses unlocked. She's asleep right now, so if we double click on her, yeah, it'll take us to a worker's hut that we are not allowed to enter. That's to be expected. I must do something We're going to unpause and, and wait a little bit longer for people to wake up and get out of their houses before we start looking for a wife. But we can get one on day one. Um, it's not imperative that you get one right away, but it's nice. Let's pause again. Because we just got two new titles. Now, on any notification here, and I do recommend you read them, you can right-click to get rid of it right away. Or you can left-click to read it. So we are now a yeoman. We can get a house instead of a hut if we'd like to upgrade it. We're allowed to own two businesses. We own ones currently. Congratulations. The council whose wisdom knows no bounds has decided to award you a new title. If you are a longtime viewer of my show and you watch my Let's Plays, you'll know that that's also the narrator from Knights of Honor. Providing for body and soul can be a heavy responsibility. With our character selected, we're going to hit the C button on the keyboard. This is our character sheet. As you can see, we just got a lot of experience because we just got a new title, and a title's worth a lot of experience. So what I like to do with my first points here, I get a point or two of rhetoric. Let's, uh, let's speed the game up again. A point or two of rhetoric, and we can afford a little bit more, so I'll take another handy crafts. So I'm going to go over the skills now while we wait for people to wake up. We'll put on slow. Constitution is the number of health you have which is, of course, very important in combat, as well as the amount of inventory slots you have locally on the character, which is not very important. However, what it doesn't tell you is it's also your lifespan. The candle here is your life expectancy. The taller the candle, the longer it thinks you're going to live. The better your constitution, the better that life expectancy is going to be. Next, we have dexterity. This is your dodging in battle, your wa uh, nah, walking speed. I'm a little bit tongue-tied. And as well as your ability to do some crimes like pickpocketing and burglary without getting caught. And dodging in a duel. A duel would be a pistol duel. That is, um, when two noblemen insult each other, they can have pistols at dawn. Dexterity is mostly useful for rogues. Charisma is kind of a weak version of rhetoric. It's a permanent favor bonus, which is nice. But it's mostly ba er, uh, based around courtship. Which you only really need to do once per character. Martial Arts is your ability to attack in battles and duels. This is your damage and I believe your accuracy as well. Handicrafts is a very nice one. Production, speed, and businesses. This means that your people will make whatever goods you're making 
faster. The only character this doesn't apply to, as far as I'm aware, is the Scholar, who I believe the Scholar has no benefit from handicrafts, they instead have a, ben a benefit from arcane knowledge. Ar or <laughs> arcane knowledge. Again, it, the game is a little bit janky sometimes. Uh, just a side note, sometimes the game will refer to it as secret knowledge. It means arcane knowledge. The game is not the best translated game in the world. I believe it's an Austrian game or a German game, and um, it's not made by the biggest studio in the world. Stealth is, of course, mostly important for rogues. It's your ability to conceal your illegal actions without getting seen. That's a nice one. We have your rhetoric. I went into this a little bit before, but it's generally your ability to say things and be taken seriously. Empathy is your ability to see through rhetoric. It basically is the counter thing for rhetoric, as well as seeing through stealth, which means people with high empathy tend to see and remember crimes better. And you write that down in your evidence book so that you could use it for blackmailing or taking someone to court. We have bargaining, which gives you a bonus to selling goods. I don't know how big that bonus is, but it doesn't seem very big, so just know that it's not a huge skill. You also get cheaper loans. And lastly, Arcane Knowledge, which is awesome for a scholar, where it allows you to produce things faster. However, for everyone else, not that important. It means that whenever you use a usable item, it'll last longer. It's not terribly useful. So we've waited for a while. Let's check in on our business here. We see we have four grain porridge done. Mostly because our workers just got to work at 8 a.m. We'll put that in the sales stock so people coming in will be able to walk in and buy some porridge while they sit down and eat. Mind you, if it is harder to make alcohol, and the alcohol is not worth a ton. In fact, it's worth a little bit less than the porridge, I believe. Yes, the alcohol is actually worth less than the porridge, and it's more expensive to make, although you do make a lot of it. However, uh, people drinking... I believe people drinking do buy more food, you know, like in real life. So it is useful to have some beer in the stock, even if it's not the thing you make the most money off of. Let's go back to important units here. We can see more people are awake. Julia here, that rogue, is 20 years old. We want to go hit on her. She's outside eating a pretzel, and by eating, I mean shoving in her eyes. So we're going to get our guy to walk over here. And you don't always have to compliment them first. You can just straight up court them sometimes, so we're going to try that. So this is just a little screen telling you about her, but we're just going to go ahead and say yes. And she's just standing there because she's unemployed at the moment. So we're going to speed up the game with the plus button to very fast as our guy comes over here. Looks like she's sick. But we can invest the money in, uh, in getting her healthy. It, it's our future wife after all. You are an attractive woman. Might I accompany you a ways? Yes. Well, she said yes. Okay. A courtship has begun. We're gonna we're gonna pause again because I can, I'm gonna show you a trick right here on how to marry a person really really fast. So we now have courted by here, which is just always going to be Julia. So what I'm gonna do here is immediately we're gonna queue up compliment and compliment her. Is it complimentary? You can click her in this menu as well, by the way, which is very useful. You are a beautiful woman. Thank you for your kind and gentle words, sir. So that makes her like us more. Now, what we're going to do, you can see the progress right there towards marriage, is hit follow me and click on her. With pleasure. You can do this anywhere. She could be across the entire map and you could click on her in here to do that. What she's gonna do now, she's gonna follow me for two hours, and I'm just gonna stand here. My goal is to not let her sleep. In fact, we're gonna go farther from her house. To work. So if she starts to walk away to go sleep, then she's not actually going to reach her house, where we can't yell at her when she's asleep. What we're gonna do is just keep an eye here. Every two hours, we can do a happiness thing. So we just did compliment. Next, we'll do embrace in a game hour. Check up on our business. Put some more of that uh, porridge in the stock. And I think we're also going to buy a little bit of fruit. I hope I don't get robbed. My grain is not moldy. So we're just going to keep tabs on things here. We want to go to foods and... Ooh, fruit is expensive. 
Uh, let me pause. How expensive would it buy, be to buy straight alcohol? Doesn't look like they're selling any. Well, weak beer, but that doesn't count. Uh, no, it looks like no one's selling straight alcohol. We need to get the fruit. That's expensive. Uh, we'll just buy three. Where would you like to go to? And then uh, unload hurry. that back there and let them know ahead of time just by left clicking on whatever they're working on and then left clicking the yeah. other thing. Let them know ahead of time to start working on the alcohol when it gets this there. Plague of rats Let's go back to our guy and he's about ready to embrace. Just go off and on a bunch so it gets updated. Here we go. Embrace her. So you just give a completely passionless hug. She gives you a non at not at all genuine thank you. And then usually right after you do that, you yell at her to follow you again. Try this may help. seem like I'm kind of cheesing the system, but the game is makes it so easy to get married anyway. That's not a big deal. Okay, here's something that often happens. I'm happy this happened actually. Why is the alcohol not being made? We have the fruit, we have people working on it. It's because we don't have enough storage space. So let's go to improve building. This lets us stack bigger amounts of the same good. This lets us have more slots. So we're gonna take an extra slot. We can see we have room now. So they're gonna start working on alcohol. Unpause and then uh, see, they're now working on alcohol, straight alcohol. We're also gonna take a large cooking pot, which increases the productivity of the bonus by 25, or of the business by 25 points, which is very good. And a fireplace to increase attractiveness to customers so more people show up to eat our food. We're also going to get a beer mug collection, which does the same thing again. Those are very, very important to get productivity and attractiveness things in your buildings. Providing for body and soul can be a heavy. All right, so we're going to go to very fast again. How long is it going to take them on that alcohol? It's only two people working. So another high priority one you want to get is workspace, so you can hire more employees. But we don't have a whole lot of money right now, so we're not going to worry about that too mm. much. Looks like we'll probably be able to beguile her before. Uh, they're done with the alcohol, but the game will notify us if they're not able to make that same thing anymore for whatever reason Production has been interrupted like that production has been interrupted on alcohol because they've run out of fruit So we're gonna tell them to start making weak beer Out of the alcohol and the wheat that we have Shall I help? something to stir up the appetites of the people coming to our bar Okay, so we can beguile in a second. Here we go and sometimes it glitches and you just mumble a lot. That was an interesting conversation. <laughs> Many thanks. It was really interesting. This game's good, don't get me wrong. It's uh, not the best program thing in the world, but it is actually really fun. Alright, our progress is more than halfway. Let's tell her to follow us again. And I just cycle through them so they don't get too stale, because sometimes they will say it's stale. It's rare that they'll call it stale when it's the first time, but they do that sometimes. So don't be too upset if she slaps you or calls you an oaf or something, because it's not the end of the world. Um, the game, I, I think I was saying before that um, it may seem like I'm cheesing the system, but it's genuinely so easy to get married in this game that you might as well just speed it up a little bit by doing this. We're not doing- we're not using any hacks or anything like that. Too this much. is all stuff in-game. So we're gonna give her a completely passionless kiss. You kiss very well, sir. No, you don't. And we can see that one more compliment and she's With ready pleasure. to marry us. If you're a scholar, you'll probably have the rhetoric by now to actually have her marry you after just the four compliment type things. But as we can see, the day only ends at 24 hours, and we have a lot of time left, which means we're probably going to marry her on day one, which is nice because marriage gives you a bonus of experience. We're just going to go back to the business here and uh, see that they have a lot of beer ready. They make beer quite fast. And something I'd recommend getting for an upgrade early on is your first storage amount. As you can see, the beer is now stacking to a larger amount, so we can have more of it on sale at once. Once they're done with all that alcohol, I'll get them back on grain porridge. And now what? But so far, we are making a little bit of money as some people are coming in and buying it. Although, we have no one serving drinks and food right now. So, there is less. there are less sales being made. Sales are still being made, but it's less than you would expect. It's kind of like a drive-thru right now. 
All right, let's give her a compliment. We'll just speed through that. Someone has and someone has fallen in love with us, which means now in the blue options we have Ask for Hand. So we just click that. Alright, she has accepted. So you can you can do this in the monastery chapel, which I believe helps your political regard a little bit. Um, we're just gonna do right here, right now. You also get more experience, I think, doing in the monastery, but we don't have the money for that. So we're just gonna do another passionless kiss. And now she's with us, as you can see up there. So I'm gonna hotkey her to control group two. And I'm going to right-click on the house so she'll go home. So. Anything wrong? And I'll tell my guy to go if back to the public house, because I want him to work. Now, employees go home and sleep for the night. However, uh, your character never needs to. So what we're doing here is we don't have the money to buy our wife a business right now. I'd like to buy her a pub or a smuggler's hole or something, but we don't have the money for that right now. So instead, we're going to have her go home and she'll just train so she can keep getting experience before we have the money for her to get her own business. Honest beer, no less. God bless. So if we go into the back room here, we'll just see our people working away grabbing carrots and whatnot. And over in the tap room, we can see that there are currently guests in what here. Is it? But no one's serving the guests, so they're not buying a whole lot. We're here now, though. And when you have a uh, one of your people who Blessing work in the business, work. in the business, in your green options, you'll find serve guests. With pleasure. I now have them serving guests. As you can see here, that increases the satisfaction of your customers, which means more people will show up and more people will return. People will buy more food and drink because... And he's got a walking glitch now where he is hovering around the bar. Oh no, he fixed himself, okay. We can see that uh, Julia is no longer doing anything, which family. means we can click on her and click train. For fame and honor. Every once in a while she'll finish training and get a thousand, or sorry, a hundred experience. We'll just go into her skill sheet here and give her some constitution because she only had one. I'm gonna go over to our guy and you see he's got some more experience right here. A little bit he's getting from serving guests, but mostly that was from the marriage. You get a solid 400-ish, 300-ish for marrying. I'll put that into handicrafts. And we see there we leveled up. That's because we've spent enough experience to level up. This is how much you've spent. This is how much you need to spend for the next level. So we go to abilities, level 2 abilities, and you'll be getting multiple of these throughout the game. And you can pick a different trait here. What I would recommend for a level 2 one for a patron... For most things, actually, I would usually recommend Mentor. This means your employees gain experience 10% faster. Level 4 is the maximum level for an employee, and the higher level the employee is, the better they do at every single aspect of their job. So it is in your best interest for that. Another good choice to pick would be to pick Motivational Artist, where when you goad your workers to work harder, it's even more effective. And then there's a level 4 skill that goes with that, of leader, which is when you go to workers, they don't get angry, which means you could go to them every single day without them getting mad at you, and they would just work harder for the rest of a uh, few hours, usually. And we're going into year two, which changes the season by one season, although so far as I can tell, seasons don't really do anything outside of cosmetics. And our guys are going home right now. We're also going to change that to green yes. porridge on what they work on. They come back to work at 8 a.m., they usually arrive at 7 and start working at 8 for most businesses. And they go home at midnight. Although some people will be lingering around, so it is in your best interest when owning a tavern to have your main character still serving drinks for a little while. I think that's about all I have to teach majorly in this episode. Either then... Court sentencing has been changed. Court sentencing is now humane, which means if someone were to be taken to court, they'll be taken easily, or taken lightly is in our house, our house has upgrades as well as any other building would. It has a lot of ones based in diplomacy and espionage. These are diplomacy things. These are espionage things. We don't have a whole lot of money to work with right now, so I can't show too much. Good, someone just bought something. The spyglass, we're gonna get that. So there's a hire random unemployed person button for your house. You're hiring thugs when you do this. They're your own personal lackeys that could act as bodyguards, assassins, spies, anything you need them to. But, unless it's just a bodyguard, it's probably something nefarious. We're gonna hire a random right now. Oh, it looks like no one- they weren't able to find an employee. Now that I have more money, maybe? Nope. 
Sometimes when you can't find one, it means you don't have enough money to find anyone who is willing to work for that price. Also, every night when it strikes midnight and we go into the next year, that is when you pay wages. So you'll notice we lost a little bit of money that night paying the wages for the people working at the bar. That is a cosmetic glitch that happens a lot there, her working, walking through the fireplace. Just ignore it. Uh, enough now? There we go. We have enough now. So we hired her. She's now on our list right here for the house. Hmm? And she's with us now. She is a thug, and she's automatically running to the house. All right, then. So what we're actually going to have her do... I'm going to show you this cool little trick. Will do. We bought the spyglass, so she's able to, if you go into the red things, which are crime-related things, she's able to spy on someone, which means she follows someone, someone around and tries to record all of their crimes if they commit any. Down here in this menu, we have important people where we can see our enemies. We can see there's a dynasty there, there that doesn't like us. The Schwarzenegger um, dynasty doesn't like us. We have non-aggression pact automatically with a few people. And neutral with a few people. What I like to do, we have dynasty here, which is of course just our dynasty family tree and character sheets and whatnot. We have the diary where it records things that happened, nothing really that important. The most important thing here, I find, is just the book of evidence, where you record all of your evidences that you found against criminals. Wealth, this is just your almanac. You can also see roughly how well you're doing. We can see that we are doing the worst for money, actually, of all the dynasties. Which doesn't surprise me, we're a patron, we start slow. You build up over time. However, we can see a politics tree here. This is Vienna's politics right now. We're a small city so far, so this will expand as the city expands. But right now we have very few jobs, just a village mayor, a bailiff, and a mediator. So these are the people of public court. You can go to the courtroom, and as long as you're high enough rank, with your rank at least being one above yeoman, which is a citizen without full rights, then you can apply for the first level of office in your city. Well, let's say I'm applying for mediator. Or, yeah, let's say I'm applying for Mediator, but the village mayor doesn't like us. Now, none of these guys dislike us, they're all neutral with us right now, but let's pretend the mayor doesn't like us. We can't really afford to bribe him right now, that's pretty expensive. And we... he's not the opposite gender, so we can't try and beguile him and hit on him to get him to like us. We're not a nobleman, so we can't hold a feast at our house. So, all we can really do is give this guy gifts, and again, we don't have a lot of money, so bribing him or giving him gifts is not very easy. There's another way. What you could do, we can get our, uh, we have our surf, our, uh, thug here. So we're gonna have her spy on the mayor. And you can see the spy icon. What she's doing now is, she, whenever the mayor comes out into the public, she's gonna start following him around. And see, she's going off to do that right now, and she'll just keep doing it until you tell her to stop. And just keep checking up your diary every once in a while in the Book of Evidence and see if anything pops up, because if he commits a crime, we'll see it. And we could take him to court over it, but he's the mayor, he's probably got diplomatic immunity. What else we could do with it, though? Is we could blackmail. If we find any big crimes on him, we could blackmail him, and this will make him temporarily like us a lot. His, effect or his approve approval rating of us will go up a lot, because we've blackmailed him. And he wants to make it look to everyone like, hey, we're friends now, right? Now, weirdly enough, because this works on a very binary, you know, like or dislike scale, as far as I can tell, he doesn't actually resent you. It's the same effect, in fact, of you bribing him or having a good feast and him just liking you. So this is an alternative way to do it for a very low cost. However, you are banking on the person doing a crime and you being able to commit it, or um, catch it. As you upgrade your house, you'll get more abilities to search these things. As we get the back room, I believe it is, um, or at least an upgrade past that, once you upgrade this to a house for the price of... for the price of 3300 you would then get the ability to ask around town to get random bits of crime on random people. That's also kind of useful. You could also go into the more direct things, like a bomb, to blow up the buildings of your competitors, try and put them out of business. And we have the diplomatic stuff here. If we were to have built this, we don't have the money for it currently, but if we were to have built this, then that would allow whoever is at the house 
so in this case our wife, to start Victory doing diplomatic relations ours. with other families, you know, make an official feud with a family you don't like, or have a pact of mutual assistance with a family. You might want to have a pact of non-aggression with a rogue family so their pickpockets don't try and steal from your dynasty. Or a mutual assistance pact with someone who you think is powerful, because then if their people see your people under attack, they'll help you. Because as competition gets fierce over the course of the game, there are families who may try to assassinate you. You may need to start bringing bodyguards around with you and even buy, buy weapons and armor for your people to wear just to make them safe at all times. And as you start climbing the political tree, getting higher and higher ranks, people are going to insult you, and if you don't back down to an insult, people are going to lose respect for you. Um, or sorry, if you back down, then people are going to lose respect for you, but if you don't back down, then you're challenged to a duel, pistols at dawn, and you may die. So you need to have some combat skills, and rhetoric also helps. So that's it for this introductory, introductory episode. I'll have a playlist in the description for a basically a tutorial series on this. I'm sure I'll think of more stuff. I want to make an episode on rogues. I want to make an advanced episode of later in the game, stuff like that. Just teaching people the game. If you enjoyed this video and you thought this game was really cool and you want to buy the game, I'll have a link in the description to the store page of the game. If I can find a discount for the game, I'll put it up there. If I can't, it'll just be the Steam page. But either way, you'll be getting the game on Steam. And um, yeah, make sure that when you get the game, you go to your properties on the game and you set it to activate any beta. When you're buying this game right now, if this is in the future, perhaps the beta won't even be there and it'll just be a final patch version. But if the beta patch is available for you, make sure to pick that up because it's always more advanced. And I think that's all I have to say. Thank you everybody for watching and until next time, have a nice day.